first what I'll do is I'll take a DVD. Um, if I, whatever comes out, you know, I'm actually using Lillian Gish again in this a new project I'm working on. And there are some new films that have been released because as things come into the public domain, since I worked with her last, which was, you know, around, I finished that film in 2011, there were a few new films released on DVD. And so I take the films. <clears throat> For instance, I have Scarlet Letter. <clears throat> and I take the film and I'll break it into image sequences. So I'll go through it and I'll look for things where I think I might be able to use her image. And I'll try to identify those files. So I'll break it, break it into little image sequences and I'll say, uh, from the rear, uh, walking away or something, or turns, turns to the right or close up, you know, or half, you can see half of her. So I, I, I use little, you know, I have a little shorthand for trying to help myself remember. And I do it by chapters. So I, I'll say, you know, this is this, because I can remember usually something about the film, like she's doing the laundry or whatever. <laughs> so the laundry scene. And, um, and then when I start working on the actual film, I'll be creating, I'll be thinking about, okay, you know, what am I going to do here? And I'll start looking through all these different image files, you know, do I need a close up? What do I want? Is she going to be doing something? And I'll star things that I thought were especially useful. And I'll just go looking. And I, um, and th across different films, I have a lot of films now. I mean, with Lily and Gish, I probably have six or seven films. And so there's a lot of material. So some of it's just happenstance. Like, I'll just happen upon something, and I'll realize, oh, that, you know, that might work there. And sometimes I'll go back and change who, because I'll find a better sequence later and think, oh, really, you know, that's better. It, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen too often. But, um, and so then I, I'll do exactly what you say. I'll take that image sequence, I'll print it out. And then there's one of two things happens. Either I create a background from collage elements. I'm more and more, I'm actually using um, filmic elements in the background. I started that with Edge of Alchemy, where you can see parts of the Frankenstein lab from like Wife of, or Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein that I sort of cut out and also put into the frame. But um, then I'll put Lillian and there's you know always some engraving there because I find the contrast between the hard lines of the engravings and the really soft quality of these DVD um, print frames. I find that kind of interesting. But um, uh, either that, either I'll, ha I'll create the background myself or sometimes I just leave the frame intact and collage over it which is actually the easiest way to make sure that the action is very similar to what was in the original film. Because one of the harder things is, you know, live action motion is very subtle. And if I'm just trying to glue her down each time, sometimes I screw up and I realize, wait, I'm not getting that original action anymore. So I'll often leave some element that was in the frame that's a stable element, maybe a chair. And I'll always lay the chair and, you know, it's complicated, and I should, probably should have a piece of paper. It'd be easier to describe, but I'll leave that chair in place so that each time I put it down, even though she's moving, the chair is stationary. So her motion is still um, co is, it's still mimicking that that's in the film because it's what I want. And then I'll just cut the chair out. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of things I do. Mm -hmm.